Hello friends, welcome to IGCS accounting tutorial. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you can receive notifications about my latest videos. Today we are going to solve January 2017 question number 1 to 10. Let's start. Number 1. A business sells goods for cash. What are the entries in the books of the seller? Option A. Cash debit, sales credit. Option B. Cash debit, data credit. Option C. Sales debit, cash credit. And Option D. Data debit, cash credit. The answer is option A cash debit sales credit because cash is received after issuing goods to the buyer. So when cash are received cash account will be debited and when goods are issued to the buyers sales account will be credited. Clear? Next. Number 2 which item would be recorded on the debit side of a sales ledger control account? Option A bad debts, option B credit sales, option C payments from debtors and option D sales returns. The answer is option B credit sales. Sales ledger control account is a kind of total debtors account and out of the given options only credit sales is recorded on the debit side of the sales ledger control account. Clear? Next. Number 3. Which transaction would not be entered in a business's cash book? Option A. Purchase of goods from T. Patel paying by check. Option B. Purchase of goods by a customer paying in cash. Option C. Purchase of goods from J. Walsh on credit. And Option D. Purchase of a new machine paying by check. The answer is option C purchase of goods from J Walsh on credit. Cash book is a ledger where only transactions related to cash is recorded and option C purchase of goods from J Walsh on credit is not related to cash. So that's why it will not be recorded in the cash book. Clear? Next. Number 4. A business instructs its bank to make a regular payment of a fixed amount to a supplier. What is this known as? Option A check. Option B credit transfer, Option C direct debit and Option D standing order. The answer is Option D standing order. Standing order is an instruction to a bank by an account holder to make regular fixed payments to a particular person or organization. Clear? Next. Number 5. What is the main purpose of preparing a trial balance? Option A balance the accounts in the ledger. Option B calculate the amount of profit or loss made. Option C ensure the balance sheet is correct and option D ensure the arithmetical accuracy of the ledger. The answer is option D ensure the arithmetical accuracy of the ledger. From the options given to select ledger cannot be balanced using the trial balance. Profit and loss cannot be calculated. Balance sheet cannot be ensured. Only one thing can be done and that is ensuring the arithmetical accuracy of the ledger. Clear? Next. Number 6. Which of the following errors would be revealed by preparing a trial balance? Option A. An amount received from J. Smith, a debtor, was entered in the account of J. Smith. Option B. An invoice received from a creditor was not entered in the accounts. Option C. A payment received from a debtor for £321 was entered in the cash book as £231. And Option D. A payment of £761 to a creditor was not posted to their account. The answer is Option D. A payment of £761 to a creditor was not posted to their account. From the options given to select, only option D is correct because for option A and B, transactions are not recorded and trial balance cannot identify any unrecorded transactions. And for C, transaction is recorded but the figure is incorrect. As the debit and credit entry is made using that wrong figure, this one will also not be revealed by the trial balance as dual effort is made. And for option D, transaction is correctly recorded in the purchaser's account but in creditor's account it is not posted. So this will be revealed by the trial balance. Clear? Next. Number 7. A trader always uses the diminishing balance method of depreciation for machinery. Which accounting concept is being applied? Option A. Accrual. Option B. Consistency. Option C. Dual aspect. And Option D. Going concern. The answer is Option B. Consistency. The trader is always using diminishing balance method of depreciation for machinery. Here, as the trader is using this method continuously to depreciate machinery and no other method, consistency concept is being applied. Clear? Next. Number 8. In the accounts of clubs and societies, which term represents their capital? Option A. Accumulated fund. Option B. Bank balance. Option C. Subscriptions. And Option D. Surplus. The answer is Option A. Accumulated fund. In the accounts of clubs and societies, accumulated fund represents capital. Clear? Next. Number 9. 
At the start of 2016, a club had subscriptions received in advance of £250. During the year, subscriptions totaling £8,300 were received and a further £345 was outstanding at the end of the year. What amount should appear in the income and expenditure account for 2016? Option A, £7,705. Option B, £8,300. Option C, £8,550. And Option D, £8,895. The answer is Option D, £8,895. How I have got this figure, I will show you by preparing a subscription account. Here is the subscription account. As we all know, a subscription account is a debtor and a creditor account. That's why the opening balance is shown on the credit side and on the debit side. And the closing balance is also shown on the debit side and on the credit side. This account actually represents how much members owe to the club and how much club owe to members. The credit side of the subscription account represents those figures which has been paid by the members last year for current year. That's why it has been shown on the credit side of the subscription account because club is liable to the members. So in this question, initially it was told £250 were received in advance. So this figure is shown on the credit side as this club is liable to the members. Then it was told that this club have received £8,300 during the year as subscription. So the journal for this transaction will be bank account debit and subscription account credit. Here is your £8,300. And lastly, it was told that further £345 was outstanding at the end of the year. Here is your £345. This one is an asset for the club because this figure means that some members still didn't pay their subscriptions to the club. That's why this is an asset for the club. And this figure will be shown on the debit side as opening balance while preparing next year's subscription account. Clear? Now we will balance this account. If you add the credit side, you will get £8,895 and this is your income and expenditure accounts figure which will be transferred to income and expenditure account. Clear? Next. Number 10. The following information was provided for the year ended 31st December 2016. Sales £80,000. Cost of sales £40,375. Stock 1st January 2016 £5,300. Stock 31st December 2016 £4,200. What was the rate of stock turnover? Option A 4.25, Option B 7.62, Option C 8.5 and Option D 16.84. The answer is Option C 8.5. In this question also I will show you how I have got this 8.5. First of all we need to find out average stock and the formula of calculating the average stock is opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. So we know that the opening stock is £5,300 and closing stock is £4,200. If you add this two figure and divide it by 2 you will get £4,750 and the rate of stock turnover formula is cost of goods sold divided by average stock. So the cost of goods sold figure was given in the question £40,375 and if you divide this figure with your average stock which is £4,750 you will get 8.5 which is your rate of stock turnover. Clear? If you like my video please share with your friends and family, like my Facebook page, subscribe my YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can receive notifications about my latest videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.